Good morning. Welcome to worship at Gethsemane Lutheran Church. I am the Reverend Elizabeth Durant, and it is my pleasure to welcome you in the season of Easter. If you are visiting with us this morning, we would love to get to know you, and we invite you to fill out a visitor card online. Jasmine will put it in the chat. A few announcements before we begin our worship time. Several of us were blessed to attend our Oregon Synod Assembly this past Friday and Saturday. It was virtual, it was a lot of Zoom time. And we had a great opportunity to gather as the Mount Hood Cluster with our new Dean, Pastor Tyler from the Dalles. And you'll be hearing from our delegates in the coming weeks about their experience at assembly. Your church COVID team, did you know we have a COVID team? We have a COVID team. And we are hard at work on guidelines around our building and facility. You will get a survey if you're on our email list. A survey this week will be sent out asking for your thoughts as we contemplate returning for in-person worship in some limited form. So keep your eyes out for that survey. And also all of Press and May packets are coming your way. So we are continuing as always to be faithful and to follow guidelines. And we're grateful for this opportunity to gather on Zoom. A reminder to stay muted, except when we tell you to unmute um, and join in the piece. And I think that's all the announcements that I have. It is the first Sunday of May. So at, as is our tradition, let us give a blessing to all of our May birthdays. Today, I have to tell you, especially today, Bridget is one. Ben's baby girl. So if that doesn't, exactly, exactly, if that doesn't make you cheer. But I know we have other May birthdays as well. So will you join me? Lift up your hands and let us send a virtual blessing to all of the May birthdays. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on Bridget and all of these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they grow in wisdom and grace and help them to trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, beloved, let us be in the spirit of worship together.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Beloved God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine from whom, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I want to give our children a blessing, but before I do that, I forgot to remind you that we will celebrate virtual communion this morning. So if you are comfortable with that, you wanna make sure that you have some bread and then some wine or juice or water, any of those will work for that part of our service. If that is not something that you want to practice in, then you are welcome to be in silent prayer. 
during that portion of our service. But now a blessing for our children, wherever they may be. Children, our scriptures this morning, uh, one of them is about of something that you've probably heard a lot already in Sunday school, but the letter of 1 John says, God is love. And because God is love, the writer says, then we should love one another. And it even says, love your brothers and sisters. Like right there. It says it a couple times. It's really clear. So the good news is that the first thing it says is that God is love. So we don't have to love on our own. Um, you may or may not have brothers or sisters, and that may or may not be an easy thing to do. Um, when we love our brother or our sister, God is visible. Like we can see how God's love works. So if your brother, your big brother, who's sometimes really annoying, falls off his bike and really badly skins his knee and you go and you run and you comfort him, like that's God's love, right? And if your annoying little sister comes and takes the painting that you made for your grandma on her special day and dumps paint all over it and you're like, Ugh! but you like go, <laughs> and then she says, she's sorry. And you say, I forgive you. That is God's love in you made visible. That is how God's love works. It shows up for us when we want to help each other and it shows up for us when we need help from each other. So my blessing for you today is that you would just be surrounded by oodles of God's love and that you would know that when you're able to love, that's God's spirit within you. So let us pray. God, you tell us that you are love and that you love us so we can love others. Watch over and bless us, your children, God. Protect us and keep us all of our days. Be with us and give us strength. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 8. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life.
The second reading comes from 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God, has, that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. 
Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Holy One, I offer you these words and this time for the healing of our families, our city, our community, our country, and our world. Speak to our hearts this morning, God. We are ready to hear from you. Grapes, vines, and branches. When I was a child, my Oma and Opa had a grapevine that hung over the sunroom at the back of the house where we used to play. And in the winter, it was just this bare square patio open to the sky. But by summer, the grapevine that covered the arbor would be full of leaves and big fat bunches of dusty purple grapes. They were like this big. I mean, I was a kid, so maybe I'm exaggerating, but they felt enormous. And they had a really thick skin and they had seeds, ew, in the middle. So we would get in trouble. We would, we would, while we were bored, waiting for our parents, my sisters and I, I may have led the charge. I was the oldest, but we climbed up and we got these grapes and we would spit out the seeds and then we would chew the skin like candy. They were so juicy. It was like magic. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Bear fruit is a common image in the Hebrew Testament about a community's faithfulness in response to God's word. So for example, Psalm 1-3 says, the person who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on the law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water who yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The vine is the source of life, all that juice, all that goodness and those seeds. The vine connects to the roots, which go deep into the soil, stable, secure. The vine holds all of the branches together, the little bunches of grapes that are just getting started in the big bunches of grapes and the old bunches of grapes, the ones that have it all together and the ones that are kind of struggling and have been attacked by birds. The vine keeps them all alive. 
Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. So how is our fruit this morning, church? How is our fruit? Are we well watered, well connected, secure on the vine, thick and juicy? Or are we maybe more a little bit like raisins? A little shriveled, maybe a little overbaked. This long pandemic year, have we started to get a little thirsty? Maybe even feel like we're gonna wither? Maybe we feel cast off because we're so isolated. We're grateful to be online and yet it's not the same. And we watch the news and the county keeps, I don't even know what we're doing with the risk level, it's moving all the time. It can feel hopeless. We don't get that energy from just being together. And to be completely honest, I think for more than a few of us, there are days it's a struggle just to get out of bed, right? We worry about ourselves. We worry about each other. We worry about our church. Maybe we, we aren't just a little thirsty. Maybe, and this, this is hard to say, but maybe we are on the burn pile. I mean, it has been so long since we were together and it does not feel like the church we know. And I know that you may feel it and that you may hear people ask it, whether you like it or not. Is this the end for our church, for Gethsemane? Well, Easter season is a really good time to ask that question because that's what Easter is about, facing death and resurrection. Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you. Abide. Abide, that Greek word means to stay, to remain. It's the same word that Jesus uses when he tells the disciples, stay with me in the garden. Matthew 26, 38. Then Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Remain. Abide. Don't close your eyes. Don't pretend that everything we've been through, you know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend all of it's just gonna go away. The losses that we have endured and the costs of this time of separation and our uncertainty, we see all of it. We remain present and we stay on the vine. I am just young enough, although it's kind of starting to, I'm getting a little too old for this, but. <laughs> I'm just young enough that people will ask me about the future of the church, like I might know, right? Because it's my generation when everything started falling apart. This is the story, how it goes, right? We were all good and fine. We were big and growing in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And then, well, it starts with Gen X. And now look at us. What's going on? What's wrong with you people that the story of Jesus is not working for you? Why aren't you in the pews? Why don't you bring your kids? I mean, as a pastor, I see it because I go into homes where the grandparents are faithful churchgoers. The people my age are like, mm, and our kids, not so much. Isn't, I mean, doesn't the story of Jesus and resurrection matter? Well, we're still dying, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, we still, look at our world, of course it matters. But here's the thing. We grew up skeptical of institutions because our parents had friends at Kent State, right? Our parents marched for civil rights. We knew from the minute we were babies that this American dream was a myth. We saw houselessness and poverty and racism and injustice and that vine that vine of God's word and the promise of resurrection seems so far away to us because this branch of American Christianity will look at it. I mean, you see the news, you know how religion, the word Christian is used for hatred and exclusion, for violence. So if my generation and the ones younger than me, if we are on the streets and we are, and mostly it's peaceful, but sometimes it's not. 
It's not because we lack decency. Most, I mean, 99% of us don't lack decency. We have morals, but we are desperate for the sake of our children because of the standard of living, because of crushing student debt, because of racism. So all of this violence and despair, it doesn't mean the vine is bad, but maybe this branch that we're on has gotten too far away from the truth of the gospel. That truth of first John that we have to love our brothers and our sisters, that's what it means to love God. First John 4, 13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. To abide, to remain on the vine is to stay awake to the Holy Spirit within us. And that is dangerous because look what the Holy Spirit tells people to do. If your name is Philip, for example, the Holy Spirit will take you to take a wilderness road, a wilderness road toward Gaza in another country, in Egypt. And the Holy Spirit will tell you when you see a rich stranger, a stranger with dark skin in a beautiful chariot, a stranger who is obviously royally connected, the Holy Spirit will tell you to go talk to that person. And before you know it, if you follow the Holy Spirit, you're knee deep in water baptizing someone you just met by the side of the road. Jesus says this, my father is glorified when you bear much fruit and become my disciples. That's where the good juicy fruit comes. So this story in Acts shows us what that means. We see Philip the disciple talking to a stranger from another culture, from another class. And by the way, he's even a eunuch. Okay, he's a eunuch. So you, let me translate that, he's queer. He's not straight. He's not a man in the way that people think of men. And that's who Philip is supposed to go baptize, and he does. And that's what it means, the Bible says, to be a disciple. At Senate Assembly yesterday, my friend Debbie Stromberg from Creator Lutheran talked about her own spiritual journey and how she has come over the years to seek out the person who's most not like her. So Debbie said when she walks into a room, the first thing she does is look, who here is most not like me? I'm gonna go talk to them. I'm gonna go hear their story. My friends, we may feel withered. We may wonder if we are on the burn pile. You may hear people wonder if we are on the burn pile. We may question if it is the end, but look at us, we're Lutherans. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is our theological ancestor. He stood up to Hitler. Are you kidding me? Of course you can do this. Of course you can face death. This is nothing new. We can face hatred and racism and homophobia for the sake of the gospel. Of course we can. It may be challenging and it ought to make us uncomfortable because do you think Philip was comfortable? Of course not, but we are called to follow Jesus. We have the same Holy Spirit in us that brought Philip to that transforming encounter with the Ethiopian. That is our God, that life-giving, growing, challenging God that we are connected to this morning. Remain on the vine, how could we not? That is our life, that is our hope, and that is our call. That is why we get up in the morning and why we don't give up and why we remain family with all that we have been through as Gethsemane, as a church. We were not meant to do this life alone. First John says we were designed for love. Love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So when we are in despair, when we are afraid, when we are tired of the news and we just want to give up, we cling to the vine and we turn to each other. Now, I know this is challenging and we need help. So this is what we're gonna do. While we as Gethsemane are hard at work and we are very hard at work on returning to in-person worship, we need to do that. But while we work on that and while we are still separated by the pandemic, we are going to get into small groups. And I'm calling these on the vine groups because it's about being on the vine. We are going to be grounded in scripture, but it's not a Bible study. 
We are going to pray together, but it's not just silent prayer. It is a time to share our hearts, to practice that love for one another. Now, this will only work if we all do it. So I can set it up. Jasmine's going to help me. But I need you all to participate. Small groups, six to 10 people, not more than 10, meet for an hour once a week on Zoom. I will send you a short scripture, some questions. You can decide what to discuss or ignore. A prayer to say together. And some guidelines because we're family and families need rules, right? Otherwise, dinner time, it's a mess. Nobody listens. Everyone talks at the same time. I'll send you some rules. We are going to start on Pentecost. How do you join a group? Jasmine is putting a link in the chat right now. There is your sign-up form. But there's only some of us here this morning. So I need you to do two things between now and Pentecost. I need you to sign up on the times you're available, and I need you to call at least one other person who's not here this morning. And this may be really easy. Maybe, maybe you need to call the easy person and then a hard person, like a person that you haven't talked to, and say, hey, guess what? We're doing this thing at Gethsemane. We've got two weeks to sign up, but we need to be on the vine. We are not afraid. We are totally alive and we are gonna get healthier because guess what? Interim is coming. I'm gonna be asking us to dig in to our history and talk about who we are as a church. And we can't do that if we're raisins. It will not work. I need us full and juicy and reconnected. So small groups starting on Pentecost, sign up today and spread the word. We will be full of hope and we will trust in one another. We will become as round and full of seeds of new life as those grapes that I picked so many years ago in my Oma and Opa's garden. So beloved, remain on the vine, cling to God's word. Remain on the vine, heed the Holy Spirit. Remain on the vine. Walk with Jesus ever closer, ever closer. And together, let us follow God's call and see where it takes us. Amen.
Let us profess our faith together in the words of our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you, when we follow your commandments to love one another. Cleanse us by your word, and give yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on earth for life. Hear us, O God. You command us to love one another. We know that love casts out fear. May those in our government lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O oh God. You nurture us with your body. We pray for all in need of your care. Those who are poor, lonely, houseless, struggling, sick or in treatment, weak, grieving, heartbroken, or afraid. Provide for the needs of all especially those we name now in heart and with voice. <clears throat> Hear us, O oh God. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit especially with Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, and those we name before you. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We'll now be sent into our breakout rooms for 10 minutes to share words of greeting and peace. And a reminder that our breakout rooms are not recorded or broadcast on Facebook.
Hello, beloved. Thank you for being with each other in that way and passing the peace virtual across distance. And we come now to the time in our worship for our morning offering. Thank you for your generosity and for your gifts to sustain the mission and the ministry of Gethsemane Lutheran Church. You may give online at the link in the chat. And just gratitude for all of the ways that you give, not only of money, but of time and with heart and with talent to nurture the work of this church and to stay on the vine together. Loving Creator, blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for victory over death in the resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all people. And now as we commune together, I invite you to hold up the bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then with the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread and raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, beloved, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer despair, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, Amen. And now, beloved, the God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, Christ is with you. Abide on the vine. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you.